Now, the 2016 Access to Medicine Index has just been released. The Access to Medicine Index analyzes the top 20 research-based pharmaceutical companies with products for high burden diseases in low and middle income countries. GSK leads for the fifth time ahead of Johnson & Johnson, Novartis and Merck KJAA, KGAA rather, statistics say 2 billion people in the world have no access to medicine. The index is published every two years by the Access to Medicine Foundation, an independent non-profit organization funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the UK Department for International Development. Joining us via remote from our London studio is Dr. Jayasri Ayer, Executive Director of the Access to Medicine Foundation. Dr. Ayer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. First off, tell us about the significance of the Access to Medicine Index and the type of impact that it's making in uh, really addressing the issue. So the Access to Medicine uh, Index uh, is a tool that we use to encourage the pharmaceutical industry to do more for people living in low middle income countries in improving access to medicines that are uh, produced by the pharmaceutical industry. And we cover a range of uh, uh, 20 of the largest uh, pharmaceutical companies and their activities in 107 countries over 51 diseases. The kind of influence that we have is in stimulating the companies to, to do more in, in these markets to to push themselves further, challenge themselves, and work with local stakeholders in improving some of the, the, the health outcomes uh, through improving access to, to the products that they have control over. This is a very critical issue when we know that there are uh, some areas in the world where people don't have the basic uh, medicine that they need. Now, tell us what are some big trends that we are seeing in this new index? So um, among the many trends that we see, uh, one critical one is we're seeing more companies um, setting up proper business models for Africa. So many years ago, there was only a couple of companies that were active uh, from the big pharmaceutical companies in Africa, which meant that uh, key products were not reaching the people in, in, in various countries in Africa itself. Sanofi was one of the forefront uh, companies that, that were very active in some of the francophone uh, countries in, in Africa. Today, um, in 2014, we then saw about nine companies setting up business business models and today we have about 14 companies um, who dedicate uh, business models specifically to Africa and some of that range from looking at specific products uh, in specific countries like uh, AbbVie and Bristol Myers Squibb uh, focus on HIV AIDS uh, and some of them are much more ambitious and broader and that's like uh, GlaxoSmithKline has a 2020 strategy for Africa and Johnson & Johnson also has a dedicated African uh, business unit. When we look at uh, diseases like neglected tropical diseases, to what extent is this a priority or maybe one of the on their agenda when, when we understand that these diseases really don't concern a big part of the world? Yeah. So more and more, as more governments and people start prioritizing the importance of neglected tropical diseases, we found that the pharmaceutical industry actually respond to, to contributing to the, to the area of neglected tropical diseases. In two main areas we're seeing this. Um, one is in uh, product donations, which are very important in eradicating and eliminating uh, the, these diseases from uh, entire population uh, uh, burdens. The second area is in research and development, in really developing new products that can uh, be more effective in, uh, in, in uh, treating some of these uh, diseases itself. And there we've seen the role of uh, partnerships really playing an important role. Uh, we see now several companies getting involved and really important uh, products um, are being uh, developed, uh, such as things for soil transmitted helminths, such as omiasis, uh, for Chagas disease, for Leishmaniasis, and, and so on. Okay, and quickly before we wrap up, what is the takeaway then from this year's index? So the main takeaway from this is that while pharma companies are doing a lot more, uh, in, especially in a continent like Africa, um, the, and, and most of the activities are focused on capacity building uh, and, and setting up new systems to, to make sure that, that more people have access to medicine and come forward and are more aware of, of medicines and really affecting some parts of the supply chain. But there's still so much more to be done. Um, most of the activities are concentrated on specific diseases, uh, specific countries and specific uh, groups of people. And what we're trying to do here now is to encourage the pharmaceutical industry to do more for the people. And we're hoping that in the countries, 
uh, countries will start prioritizing healthcare, prioritizing the, the financing of healthcare, and really um, insist that the pharmaceutical industries, as they're working in these companies, in these countries, actually bring okay. uh, forward affordable quality solutions. Okay, great. Dr. Aya, thank you so much for joining us. And that was Dr. Jessri Ayer. She's executive director of the Access to Medicine Foundation.